Zai's mic is unmuted, but I cannot hear her. Priscilla, would you like to go next? Yes. Um, topic? Yeah. Thank um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for, for inviting me. I think I, I would like to start by just congratulating uh, Wow for putting this together. Um, for some of us who have been on this road before, it is a welcome change to what has been going on in, in Zimbabwe. And you probably know that some of us have refused to comment on anything that is happening in Zimbabwe, precisely because we felt that the narrative was very male. And I'm, I'm quite excited that uh, we are beginning to talk about how we bring in a feminist narrative to what is going on. Um, so as I, as I speak to the unpacking, I think language uh, is important. I'm not sure that the language that we have taken on in even beginning to talk about this process is a female language. Um, and and I'll, I'll justify it. Um, females never really talk around crisis because if we spoke about crisis, nothing would ever happen. I mean, there's always some problem from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed. That's, that's your women's life. Um, and I think the way we have dealt with it is because we have understood problems as challenges because the moment you look at a crisis, it disempowers you. The moment you define something as a crisis, it disempowers you. You start at a level in which this is so big, it can't be dealt with. So I would say, as I unpack what is happening in Zimbabwe, I would say perhaps the lingo has to change. So for Zimbabwe, we are looking at what are the challenges from a feminist perspective. Uh, we've been there before. Um, and when I say we've been there before, if you look at the role of women during the challenges, the post-colonial challenges, the role of women as we crafted uh, the constitution, which we are very proud of, was on the basis of what are the challenges and how do we ensure that we deal with those challenges from both an institutional point of view and from a legislative point of view. And there were structures that women built to be able to come to the point where we agreed on what the challenge was. So as we have this discussion, I see it as the beginning of a process. Because I remember that when we, prior to going into the inclusive government, we actually had a closed door process with a few women at that particular point in time where we came up with a white paper. But we spend a bit more time to say, but what exactly is our challenge? Are some of these challenges, challenges that we are taking on because they have been fed into us so many times? Do we have taken them as our challenges? Is there a different way of beginning to define those challenges? And just listening to, to, the co to colleagues that have spoken before, I can begin to see the, the different trends that we could take on. And, and like Namatai said, both from a political, economic, and social. And I'm sure if we were to sit down as women, we may actually find that our narrative is completely different from the narrative that is given to the world. And understandably, let's also understand that Zimbabwe has been internationalized. And with internationalization comes a particular narrative. The question is that narrative, what is it based on? What are the ideological issues that are foundational to the narrative that we have taken on as a narrative for Zimbabwe. Is there no time, particularly if you are talking as feminists, of beginning to critique that narrative, not only from a male-female perspective, but from an ideological perspective? Because I think they are underlining ideological perspective that are associated with the challenges that Zimbabwe has. Very simply put, without taking most of your time, I actually believe as feminists, we have always been leftist to some extent. Is the globalization that is happening where capital and capitalism has taken over the definition of what is social acceptable, what is economically acceptable, what is political acceptable? Has it impacted on what is currently happening in Zimbabwe? And I find it a bit sad 
when we deal with the issues and the challenges of Zimbabwe purely from what is happening in Zim and not necessarily from global forces and the ideological issues that we are beginning to see that not only impact on Zimbabwe, but on Africa in general. So that is a whole lot of things that I've put there, but I'm hoping that we can actually find some indava, closed indava, a safe space in which we can interrogate some of these things more detail. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priscilla. Um, and yes, the language will change as of now, right now. So the Zimbabwean situation, women is solution holders, what needs to be done? I really appreciate that. Thank you very much.